speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. All right, guys, now I hope you're all good. So in this video, I'm gonna run through how I like to speed ramp in DaVinci Resolve. Plus, there's gonna be a little bonus feature that could potentially save you a lot of money by not having to upgrade your camera. Or at least, not yet anyway. Right, so we're in Resolve, in the edit page, and as you can see, I've already got four clips in my timeline that I'm gonna use as examples for this tutorial. Right, so if I just zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And to begin with, we're just gonna look at a very basic speed ramp on this one clip here. And all I want to do is, as I pan up to reveal the people on the bridge, I want it to go into slow motion. So it'll start off normal, and then it'll go to slow motion. And because this clip was shot in 50 frames per second, and my timeline is in 25 frames per second, it means I can slow it down by approximately 50%. And the first thing we want to do is get up our re-time controls. And we do that by right clicking on the clip and then going up to re-time controls. Or you can press Command and R if you're on Mac or Control and R if you're on Windows. As you can see, it's now brought up this speed change thing above our clip. And the next thing to do is basically place the playhead exactly where you want the speed ramp to happen. So for me, it's probably somewhere about there. Then if you look down here, we've got a little drop down menu. We're gonna click that and press add speed point. This has essentially split the clip into two. Now it hasn't actually divided the clip, it's just added a speed ramp keyframe. So now we can alter the speed on either side of that keyframe point. You can add as many of these as you like. So over here, I can add another one if I wanted to, but for this example, I just want the one. Now, before we go to the next bit, I just want to zoom out a little bit to show you what will happen if you don't quite set this up properly. So keep an eye on this clip here and basically the length of it. So to adjust the speed, all we need to do really is go to this little drop down down here, click on it, change speed, and then I can do it to 50%, but keep an eye on that clip that is next to it. Now, did you notice that that clip dramatically decreased in length? Because basically we've added 50% of the time to this clip which has overridden the beginning part of that clip. And we don't want that. So if we just press Ctrl and Z, and likewise, if I decide to speed this section up, so make it a lot faster, say by 200%, look what happens now. Now we have this gap created in our timeline. So if I just undo this, and the reason this happened is because we're in the selection mode as highlighted by this little red arrow. Now to get around this, all we need to do is change to the trim edit mode. Now you can do this by hitting T on your keyboard or you can just click on this little icon here. So now if we decide to increase the speed, see what happens to the clip on the right hand side. Everything just shifts to the left, which is ideal. There's no more gaps created. And likewise, if we undo this and now slow this footage down, Take note to what happens to the clips to the right hand side. So if we decrease this by 50%. Now, as you can see, everything is just rippled to the right hand side. Nothing has been overridden. Ideal, that's exactly what we want. So make sure that you're in the trim edit mode when you're making these changes. Right, so now that we've made our speed change, we just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. If we play this back, you'll see what we've done. So that's not too bad but we can make it better because as you can tell, it's basically just made a sudden speed decrease, which yeah, it kind of looks okay on this clip, but we want it to gradually slow down. We want to create a speed ramp, <laughs> hence the name of this tutorial. And because our speed point is actually a keyframe, we need to go into the keyframe editor in the top left. Now, please note this is for DaVinci Resolve 20 and above. So if you're using an older version of Resolve, this may vary slightly. Right, so if we click on the little keyframe button up in the top, you'll see our keyframes displayed here, but this isn't very intuitive. We don't have, really have a clue what's going on. So we actually wanna see the retime curves. So if we click on this little icon up here, it's gonna bring up the curve graph. Looks a little bit complicated and there's a lot going on. So we can simplify this even more. Click on the three little dots, then go to display selected parameters, video, uncheck all, and then we're just gonna to want to come to where it says retime speed. So now all we're gonna see is our retime graph, which is gonna make it a hell of a lot easier to see what's going on. So now that we've just isolated the keyframes for the speed change, you can see that that is pretty abrupt. <laughs> we actually want this to be a curve. So the way we do this is this is our little speed point here. So if we just click on that, then we can right click and you can see these little icons here. If we just click on this middle icon here, it's essentially gonna add an ease in and an ease out to our keyframe. 
Now the graph is looking a hell of a lot better and it looks more gradual, which is exactly what we want. So now if we play this back, now we have a speed change that eases in and eases out. Easy as that. <laughs> oh, my dad jokes just get worse. Now you can stop there or you can play about with the curve to get the desired look that you want. And you do this by adjusting these bezier handles over here. So you can either extend it out further or you can reduce it, which is essentially just going to reduce or extend the length of this transition. So for me, I like to have it a bit more gradual. So I'm just going to pump it out a little bit further on. So if we play that back again, you might notice that it's a much more gradual speed change. Good stuff. However, what if you want to change the location of your speed point or you want to actually choose a speed that's not available in the drop down list? So if we start with changing the location of the speed point itself, you can do this in a couple of ways. The first way is to grab this little handle in the bottom and then just slide it to the right or left. This is now going to adjust that location of that key point, as you can see in the graph at the top and also as you can see by the rippling timeline on the bottom. The other way we can do it is to actually go into our graph itself and then just grab this speed point and then just move it right or left. And as you can see in the timeline, it's making those adjustments. So that's how we change the location of the speed point. But what if we want to actually adjust the speed that isn't in this drop down list? So as you can see, we're very restricted in the speeds that we can choose. So we can do this again in a couple of ways. Now, the first way is to grab this little handle again, this time at the top and then move it left or right. However, you may have noticed that it only adjusts the left hand side of the clip. It took me a while to figure this out because it's not obvious. So to change the speed of this side, it's actually quite fiddly and you need to go into the top right hand corner of your clip and wait till you see this little double ended black arrow. Now it is quite annoying because there are so many other little icons that appear at the same time. So you want to make sure that you've got this little black icon here. So now we can adjust the speed of this part of the clip, which is magical. So I personally prefer to adjust the speed in the timeline. I just find it a bit more intuitive or you can nip over to the keyframe editor again, select your keyframe and then just hold it and drag up and down. And as you can see, it's making those exact same changes. So that's the quick and easy way to change the speeds. Now there is a third way. There's probably a fourth and a fifth as well, but there is a third way to adjust the speed as well, just in case you're finding it a little bit tricky to get the exact number that you require. All right, so to do this, you're going to want to place the playhead over the section that you're wanting to adjust. Make sure you've got your clip selected, head over to the inspector in the top right hand corner, scroll down to where it says speed change, make sure that ripple timeline is selected. And then we can just either scroll this little wheel here or we can put an actual figure in here. So if we want to put 54.8, we can do that. And there you can see we've now adjusted this speed to be 54.8. That's just in case you wanted to get super accurate. So that's it for the basic speed ramping. Now let's do a speed ramp transition. So for the speed ramp transition, I'm going to use these two clips here. So if I just play these just so you know what's going on, walking through Budapest, and then we have a close up of this magnificent building here. So I want to create a transition between this clip and that clip. So it gives the impression that we're zooming in to this structure. Now, instead of just slowing the footage down at the end, for the first clip, I'm going to want to slow it down at the beginning and then speed it up towards the end. And for the second clip, I'm going to want to speed it up and then slow it down at the end. So we do this in the exact same way before. We can right click on the clip, go to retime controls, or you can just press control and R or command and R. So I want the transition to begin about a second into this clip. So somewhere around there. So again, this little icon here, add speed point. And then for this part of the clip, because we're speeding this section up, we're going to lose a lot of information here. So we're going to want to adjust this speed point towards the end of the clip, probably leaving about a second or a second and a half at the end, somewhere about there. So click here, add speed point. Now for this example, I'm just going to use the figures that I've already tested out because they work well for these clips. Your clips might be different, so you don't have to use these exact numbers. You can play about with it. This is just to give you an idea of how to create this transition yourself. So again, we want to make sure we're in the trim edit mode, hover over the part of the clip that you want to adjust, click it. Now, because I'm using numbers that aren't available in this dropdown, I'm going to have to do it manually over in the inspector. So I'm going to change the first half to 50 because I want to slow it down by 50%. Then the second half, I want to change this to 2000%. 
And then for the second clip, the first part is going to be 4,000. Again, I've already tested these numbers. You might want to play about with it yourself. And then the second half, drop this back down to 50%. So if we just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And if we play that back, you can see that everyone's in slow motion and then woof, looks pretty good already. But again, we've got that sudden change. We want to make that speed ramp. So with our first clip selected, go over to the keyframe editor, click on the little keyframe, right click, ease in, ease out. You can adjust the Bezier handles again to suit. I just want to extend it a little bit further. Do the same for the second clip, click on the little keyframe, right click, ease in, ease out, and I'll just extend those handles a little bit further. So now if we play this back, now that's looking pretty good, but I just want to change the location of this first keyframe just so it comes in a little bit quicker. So if I just drag this bottom half to the left, somewhere around there should be fine. So to make this even better, I'm going to want to add an adjustment layer just over our speed ramp transition here. So if we go into the effects panel and type adjustment layer, drag that over the top. Let's just decrease the size so it fits just over our transition. Zoom back in so we can see what we're doing. So with the adjustment clip selected, go back to the effects library in the open effects tab. We're gonna drag the directional blur over the top. Then in the inspector, make sure that you're in the effects tab. Adjust the parameters as you see fit. I'm probably just gonna leave it at default, but I'm gonna change the angle to zero because I don't need it to look like it's going in any form of direction. Adjust the size of the clip so it just covers our keyframes. Then if we drag these little handles in, it's just going to gradually fade this transition over the top of our footage. So now if we play this back, we have a much more professional looking speed ramp transition. How cool is that? So yeah, that is all pretty cool stuff. But the next thing I'm gonna show you is the little bonus feature that will blow your mind and potentially save you thousands of pounds from buying a new camera that you think that you need. I mean, yeah, I do need an S1 too. I, I do need one, I, I, I actually do. So if we just zoom out and go to the fourth and final clip at the end of the timeline, you will see this stunning clip of these hot air balloons in Cappadocia, if I haven't told you already. <laughs> stunning place, you gotta visit. However, I was a little bit restricted in shooting this particular clip because I was using the Lumix S52X. And we all know how restricted that camera is when it comes to its slow motion performance. So I wasn't able to shoot in 50 frames per second because that would incur a crop in 4K and I wanted a much wider angle and field of view as you can tell. So I was restricted to 25 frames per second, which isn't the end of the world. And because I was shooting in a high shutter speed because it was daylight and I didn't have an ND filter on, means in post, I can have a little bit of fun, especially in DaVinci Resolve. So this now is gonna blow your mind, guaranteed. So if we're back in the timeline, our clip is selected, go back up into the inspector, scroll down to where it says retime and scaling. Retime process, you want to change this to optical flow. Then for motion estimation, you're gonna to want to choose AI speed warp better. And then if we change our speed now to 50%, play this back. Now this is very labor intensive on your computer. So I'm just gonna speed this up by rendering this section out. How awesome is that? I've basically just upgraded my S52X to an S1. Well, not quite anyway, I still want the S1, but what essentially has just happened is DaVinci Resolve has used AI to fill in the missing frames. So as I said, I shot this in 25 frames per second. I wanted to make it 50. So it's basically just guessed and filled in the blanks. Now there are things you can do to help make this run a little bit smoother because it doesn't work for everything. And one of the things that you can do is what I did, shoot at a higher shutter speed. So then the camera has more sharper points of information to guess the next frame, if that makes sense. If everything's a little bit blurry, it can sometimes create these little artifacts. So yeah, if you're gonna to want to do this, shoot at a higher shutter speed, but also use clips that are a little bit easier for the AI to predict. Mine was pretty easy. Everything was already moving quite slowly anyway. It's just hot air balloons in the sky. But if you've got things moving about really quickly and you've got feet and people and whatever, it might struggle to sort of predict what's going on and you might end up with some weird like artifacts. So yeah, it's not a full-time solution. It is very labor intensive on your computer. However, it might just 
stop you from having to upgrade to that S12 that you really want, or that I really want. I really do want that S12, like, a lot, I'm not gonna lie, just don't have the money. But if you wanna speed that process up a little bit, you can always head over to my website, buy a few presets and plugins, <laughs> or just watch these videos. You know, I appreciate you all, and just watching these videos helps this channel, so very much appreciate it, guys. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. Hit the bell. All those nice things that will put a smile on my face. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Can you hear my tummy? Honestly, it's just rumbling. I've not had lunch yet. <sighs> Right, where was I? Video number two. I know, I know. You heard a little something about me, right? People love to talk, everybody wanna tell me, right? I know, I know. Bunch of fakes all around me, right? They clowning like, I ain't hear what it sounded like. I know, I know. These fools hating on the low.